There's a whole lot of death and drama that takes place at Helios 1. But if we turn west from the main gates to Helios 1, we stumble upon some craggy and hazardous landscape. All that seems to thrive here are cactuses and scorpions, some of which we'll have to destroy. But if we manage to weave our way through, we find a cave opening at the base of Black Mountain. We see the satellite dishes and antennas at the top of Black Mountain, which we explored in a dedicated video that you can watch here. But beneath them is a dark and foreboding opening. This is Black Rock Cave. Creeping inside, we find some dead coyotes. Coyotes typically live in caves like these. I wonder what could have killed him. And then we see it, off in the distance, a shimmering form. We know that this can be one of two things, either a night stalker or a night kin, but these are far too large to be night stalkers, and due to this cave's proximity to Black Mountain, these can only be night kin. We can risk creeping closer, but if we're caught, you're mine! Someone's there. They turn hostile and we have to kill them. Now these Nightkin are supposed to be friendly. As long as we repaired Rhonda, Tabitha's favorite robot, during the quest Crazy Crazy Crazy. I had. So it's a bit of a bug that these Nightkin were hostile. Nearby, we find a corpse on the ground, a dead prospector. But off to the northeast, we see another shimmering form. Now, I read that the Nightkin in this cave are supposed to have special flavor dialogue, if friendly, that mentions the courier's progress through the main story of the game. However, no matter how long I waited here, he never spoke, even if I used console commands to turn him friendly. So I don't think the Nightkin in this cave have any special dialogue. No different from the Nightkin wandering around Jacobstown, at any rate. But with all the Nightkin dead, we can inspect this dead prospector. In her hand was some Hydra. I wonder why she was trying to repair her limbs with it. And on her corpse is one Psycho, five bottle caps, some leather armor, and a unique item, the Paladin Toaster. The Paladin Toaster is a unique Zap Glove from the game. The Zap Gloves are similar to Displacer Gloves, except that they do less damage and instead have a bonus effect dealing plus 50 damage to robots and plus 20 damage to enemies wearing power armor, hence the name Paladin Toaster. A standard Zap Glove, which we can buy from many of the merchants in the game, has a base damage of 35, far less than the 50 base damage of the Displacer Glove. But this weapon, the Paladin Toaster, has a base damage of 41. That brings its DPS up to 67.1, easily making it the best Zap Glove in the game, and almost matching the DPS of a Displacer Glove. The real benefit to this weapon is, of course, the bonus to robots and power armor. Here I am taking it on a spin inside Hidden Valley to see how it does against the Brotherhood of Steel, which brings up one of the big problems with the weapon. We have very few opportunities to use it against power armor wearing enemies. The only ones who wear power armor are the Brotherhood of Steel and a few NCR soldiers. And honestly, there are not a lot of robots in Fallout New Vegas. There are a few places swarming with them, including Big Mountain. So for an unarmed character, the plus 50 damage to robots might come in handy. 
But the vast majority of our time, we're not going to be fighting either robots or people in power armor. In Sierra Madre, we fight ghouls in hazmat suits. In Honest Heart, we fight tribals. In Lonesome Road, we fight deathclaws and tunnelers. And throughout the majority of the game, we fight faction enemies. NCR, Legion. Every now and then, we'll have to fight a Securitron, a Sentry Bot, so on and so forth. And for that reason, I think the Paladin Toaster has limited use. It only weighs six pounds so perhaps an unarmed player might keep it in his or her inventory, just in the off chance that they stumble upon a robot, but I don't think it would make a good, everyday, all-round weapon. And with that, we fully explore Black Rock Cave and the Paladin Toaster. I am out of town today on a business trip, gathering materials to make something special for this channel. But I didn't want to leave you hanging while I was gone, so I whipped up this short video to tide you over. I'll be back in a bit, but don't worry, every day I'm gone I'll have something for you, though it might be a bit shorter like this video. If you want to make sure you don't miss the new content I've got in store for you, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. I've got a brand new shirt in the shop. Unity Times. That's right, it's everyone's favorite supervillain with a theme song from Fallout 3. This design comes in a variety of men's, women's, and children's sizes, and in a wide array of colors. It also comes on other products as well, like smartphone cases, mugs, pillows, posters, prints, etc. So if interested, you can find a link to my shop in the description below, or you can click here. I'm becoming more active on Twitter. I'll be tweeting while I'm gone when I'm allowed. So if you're active on Twitter, I encourage you to follow me at Oxhorn. If you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming one of my patrons on Patreon. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow, bright and early, with another shorter video.